Okay, um, <laughs> hopefully this works, hopefully my, the audio works and everything. Uh, good evening, this is David, of course. Uh, one sec, I'm going to pull up your email here. Uh, 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 uh. Kind of having a, hard, having a hard time with, path, with the pathology section of the book. I'm a little overwhelmed with all the information. What would be the best way to study the pathology section for the inbox? Okay, <clears throat> so pathology um, diseases, right? So you've got to start with the foundational stuff with that. Like, what is a disease? What are the different types of diseases? How do, how do these diseases affect the parts of the body that, that they're found in? Um, like, specifically with infectious diseases, you kind of need to know those. Uh, a, a lot of those, anyway. Uh, infectious diseases, autoimmune diseases, uh, those, those are the primary ones that you're going to want to focus on. Okay, so what is a bacterial infection? What is a viral infection? What is a parasitic infection? What is a fungal infection? What are those? Those are all infectious diseases, right? Um, autoimmune disorders. What happens? The, the body's immune system attacks structures in the body that it shouldn't, right? So when you get that basic information down, the, the, the building blocks for your education with pathology, it makes things a little bit easier. Uh, especially with contraindications. If you know that, in general, bacterial infections are, at the very least, local contraindications, that makes that a little easy, right? So if somebody has some sort of infection, at the very least, it's a local contraindication. Certain types of infections, uh, bacterial, viral infections, are going to be absolute contraindications. Something like encephalitis is, a, is a, an absolute contraindication. Meningitis. Uh, Jeez, there, there, there are so many. I'm, I, it's just everything running through my head. Like, what? What are some other examples, right? So, break it down into smaller pieces. So you you start with that that foundational uh, uh, stuff, that information, that foundational information, and then you can kind of branch off from there. Okay. So you got bacterial infections and, and making lists. You can make lists. You know, write a on a piece of paper. Or something. Let me grab one of these. On a, on a piece of paper, a little uh, doodling thing. Like our pet. Be on the lookout later this year, or next year. Next year. It's almost the end of the year. So I can't say it later this year. Next year. Um, so on a piece of paper, you can you can write down uh, bacterial infections, and then you can list as many as possible, and you can list them as local contraindications or absolute contraindications, right? And you can do that by system. Uh, you can do that by structure. You know, if, if you have a bacterial infection in a bone, is that going to be the same as a bacterial infection in the skin? No, probably not. This is going to be more serious, right? Uh, so you you can separate it like that, um, and that might make it a little bit easier. Uh, and, you, and you can do that with all the different types of diseases too, like psychological disorders, list them. You know, are any of them contraindicated? No, and I don't. I don't think they are anyway. Uh, there, there are certain things you might not want to do with certain clients. Like if somebody has anorexia nervosa or bulimia, you're probably not going to do a deep tissue massage because there's not a lot of padding there to kind of absorb the pressure that you're applying, right? So small things to think about with, with that stuff, right? Um, so you can write down this, this stuff, you know, the types of diseases, list as many as you can based on whether or not they are local contraindications or absolute contraindications. You can write down organs in the body and diseases that specifically affect those organs. Um, you, can, you can write down other structures in the body, like bones, diseases that specifically apply to bones and, and affect bones in some way, like fractures. Dislocations, possibly, possible dislocation. Um, so things like that, that, you know, just compartmentalize, you know, make it make it smaller, smaller, smaller bits of information, you know, make, make it more manageable for yourself, one step at a time, okay? So start with that, those foundational pieces of information, understand the disease process, you know, when we contract a disease, I gotta make sure this has a little mouse thing on it, make sure I don't press that. Um, when, when we, uh, I forgot what I was, uh, oh, we have to understand the disease process. Like when we 
have a disease, when a disease develops in the body, what causes it to develop? How does that influence the body? What does uh, inflammation do? You know, that's, that's something to really pay attention to. What does inflammation do? What, what causes inflammation? Uh, all stuff to kind of kind of think about, but you take it one step at a time. Okay, so I have it laid out in the book for a specific reason. Okay, so I want you to learn that information before you start jumping into, you know, okay, there's all these diseases. Uh, it's, uh, yes, it's, it can be overwhelming. Okay, just break it down into smaller pieces. Understand disease first. Like, what is disease? And what are what are things like inflammation, phagocytosis, all that stuff, and then jump into the specific diseases and see how do they apply. And you can write down this, you know, this disease, um, arteriosclerosis. Is that a congenital disease? No. Is that an infectious disease? No. Um, you figure out what kind of disease uh, these diseases are. You can write that, that, that down, and that makes it a little bit easier to, to manage as well, okay? So figure out what kind of diseases we're talking about. Figure out the contraindications for each disease. Like I said, viral infections typically are going to be, at the very minimum, local contraindications. Something like herpes simplex 1, um, you know, cold sores and stuff. Is somebody running down the street? That's a little weird. I, I live in a quiet part of town, seeing somebody dashing, dashing. I guess it was a delivery driver. He dropped off food at the wrong spot. So he went and grabbed it back. Good uh, good wheels on that guy. Anyway, um, I, I get so sidetracked so easily. Um, so, so like I said, herpes simplex 1 is something that's like a local contraindication, right? You wouldn't touch it, but you can work on the rest of the body. Whereas something like influenza or coronavirus is going to be an absolute contraindication, right? So you break it down into those contraindications. You know, can this make the client feel worse? Just general, you know, their entire body by giving them a massage. If it does, it's probably going to be a, a an absolute contraindication. If is it going to make the part of the body feel worse, but not the rest of the body? It does local contraindication, right? So something something like um, ampetigo, because it's it's a bacterial infection, highly contagious. Even though the the client might not feel you know too bad, you don't want to get it, right? So is it a disease that can spread to other people? Is it a communicable disease? Can other people get that disease? If they can just by touching it or being around it, probably going to be a local contraindication, right? Um, and again, there's severity kind of changes too uh, with some of these. But just, just speak in generalities at first, and then you can dive a little bit deeper into, okay, well, if, if bacterial infections are typically contraindicated, which ones then are local and which ones then are absolute? Uh, which ones are going to make the client feel worse or spread to other people like me, the massage therapist, which ones are just going to stay with the client? Uh, you know, so, something like hepatitis is a viral infection, right? You're not going to get it by massaging a client unless you have an open wound and you massage the client's open wound or something like that. Like it's not a respiratory thing. It's not an airborne uh, disease uh, in any way, right? So you're not going to get it. And there are periods where the client feels fine if they have it. Lots of people have the herpes virus in their body. You've probably already massaged them. You might have herpes. Herpes, di different types of herpes, of course. Herpes zoster, chicken pox. If you've had chicken pox in the past, you've got a form of herpes. Um, but that doesn't mean you're going to spread it to other people. It doesn't mean other, other people are going to give you that form of herpes just by just by touching them unless it's in the acute stage right so that's something else you can think uh, you can make little notes about is this condition fine to work on in the acute stage or not right because if somebody has chicken pox in, in the acute stage absolute contraindication that's when it can spread 
if somebody has had chicken pox and it's not there anymore, then you're fine, right? So, again, just, just break it down. Make lists. Make lots of lists. Categorize things. Things. Make uh, little little bubble um, diagrams or whatever that kind of branch off, right? Um, so you start off with with like get an actual pen, I suppose. Out of my desk here. Uh, so so infectious diseases. Then I would I would branch off. Uh, In the in the in the skin, right? And then I could say, you know, what, acne. No, not a good one. Impetigo, right? I can do I can do stuff like that. You know, just small small stuff like that. Um, infectious diseases. Then you can branch off. Have have one side bacterial one side viral right you got you got those and then you can branch off into the each uh, each body system and stuff like that so make connections like that um, might make it a little bit easier on it so uh, that's that's how I would approach doing all of the uh, the pathology stuff and medical terminology I, I can't stress this enough I tell this to everybody everybody if you are studying pathology know your medical terminology because medical terminology can help you understand pathology so much better you can look at a medical term that you've never seen before and you can figure out what the what the general you know the gist of it is just by looking at the name something like arteriosclerosis arteriosclerosis i can break into three parts arterial sclera and osis right arterial means artery sclera means hard osis means condition so knowing that information what can i understand about the condition artery hard condition the arteries become hard it's not the entire you know art like all of the arteries but parts of arteries can become hard. So you you can understand just just the most basic information about it just by knowing your medical terms and bring, being able to break down those medical terms, okay? So know your medical terminology for sure. Um, and other than that, um, I have no, nothing else to say. So I hope that helped. Uh, I'm gonna share this video with you and um, Lots of other people, because I'm sure other people have, uh, have the same issue. Uh, you know, pathology is a kind of an overwhelming thing at times. It's a very large portion of your studying. It's a very the, the biggest portion of my book for sure is pathology. Um, so, but it, it's a little bit easier when you understand your medical terms and you can break things down into smaller pieces. Okay. So, uh, any other questions? Just let me know.